Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. As I reported on Ancient Architects just a few days ago, the lost Dixon relic from the Great Pyramid of Egypt was rediscovered at the University of Aberdeen, and it was also radiocarbon dated between 3341 and 3094 BC some five to eight hundred years before the reign of the supposed builder of the Great Pyramid, King Khufu. This is a small piece of cedar wood, a tree that isn't native to Egypt, and it is so important to the story of the Great Pyramid because of exactly where it was discovered. It was found inside the Queen's Chamber northern shaft, and this shaft never opened up into the Queen's Chamber, with the end being covered over by a load-bearing wall block, and it also never reached the edge of the pyramid, stopping at this limestone door some 15 to 20 metres from the edge of the pyramid. Beyond this door is likely just the core masonry blocks of the pyramid. Therefore, we have an isolated shaft inside the Great Pyramid that nobody has accessed from when the shaft was made to its discovery and opening in 1872, when Wayman Dixon chiselled through the limestone wall block to find it. So, it's important. It's not a later addition by Greeks, Romans or Arab explorers. It wasn't added in the Middle or New Kingdoms or Sate period. It likely dates to the Great Pyramid's construction, because it was sealed by load-bearing blocks that did not allow access. Of course, in my recent hour and a half documentary, I presented physical evidence for the Great Pyramid's extension, and the pyramid's original form and the extension, I do believe were all in the same era. When the first stage of the pyramid was complete, during the reign of King Khufu, I said that these doors were added to the Queen's Chamber shafts to close them up. This is because I believe the Queen's Chamber was simply a contingency burial chamber if the King's Chamber did fail. These narrow shafts from the Queen's Chamber were closed before the pyramid was completed and it reached its current size. Some people have commented that the Great Pyramid is in fact far older and that Khufu merely extended it, and they say that the piece of wood could have been dropped in the top of the shaft at the time when Khufu extended it. Well, I am one to ponder every possibility, and this isn't really possible due to the nature of the shaft. The wood was found in the early part of the Queen's Chamber northern shaft, Beyond this, it curves around the Grand Gallery, goes left and right at tight 45 degree angles and up, as it clearly follows a winding path. These air shafts are not straight, far from it. If you drop the wood inside from the top, it is unlikely to ever reach the very bottom. Due to its weight and spherical shape, the dolerite ball could, but a piece of cedar wood is unlikely, especially as it is thought to be part of a larger wooden rod or stick and therefore it couldn't navigate the bends of the shaft, and it also hasn't got the weight to pull itself down to the bottom. Therefore, that is the reason that I believe this piece of wood is significant, and it can date the construction of the Great Pyramid. I think it was left inside the shaft before the Queen's Chamber was complete, because it is closer to the Queen's Chamber than the small door at the other end. So, it is logical to assume that the wood dates back to the pyramid's construction. But what about these dates of 3341 to 3094 BC? These are a bit of a headache, because to marry this up with the reign of King Khufu does require a number of unlikely assumptions. No, they're not impossible, but they are unlikely. And I have to thank YouTube users A Pinch Micronova for making me think on this more critically. He replied to my comment on a recent video by Uncharted X. He was direct and he used logic, and that's the kind of constructive criticism I do find useful. I assume that Micronova disagrees with my recent conclusion that the Great Pyramid is a tomb that was built by Khufu. And that's all well and good, and I know that many agree with him. But I think to make the bold claim that the Great Pyramid is not a tomb, you do need to explain all the evidence to the contrary, leave no stone unturned, and explain all of the strange anomalies inside the Great Pyramid. Do that and nobody can disagree. Micronova criticised my recent conclusion, and then stated how the wood relic actually and logically goes against my recent interpretation that Khufu built the Great Pyramid. 
And you know what? Logically, he is correct. I can't fault him. As I said, that's the kind of constructive criticism that is useful. So, let's take a closer look. The wood that was found in the Great Pyramid is likely from a Lebanese cedar tree. But for this piece of wood to support the hypothesis that Khufu built the Great Pyramid, it means it must come from an old tree and that the wood was likely repurposed. This isn't impossible, but it is an assumption. These were quick explanations provided by the experts to accompany the news story of the discovery of the wood, because the evidence seems to be at odds with the narrative of Khufu building the Great Pyramid. But an important thing we should all note and remember is that no single sample of wood can accurately date a structure. It needs to be added to the collection of carbon-14 dates from the Great Pyramid, and there are many dates recorded from charcoal and also one from a reed. These were obtained from the Great Pyramid's mortar, from various locations from the bottom to the top of the pyramid. The reign of Khufu is said to be from 2589 and 2566 BC, and the calibrated radiocarbon dates of the charcoal in the pyramid vary from 50 to 300 years before the reign of the king which is possible because the age of the samples is the age of the wood, and you don't cut down a sapling to get your wood. You would use an older tree because this would give the maximum return. But when you look at all of the calibrated dates, and you see that they're all older than Khufu's historical reign, well, it does get a bit suspect. The wood from the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft would be expected to be older than the pyramid's construction, of course but the piece of wood is older than expected, which I'm sure is causing many Egyptologists a mild headache. So, let's take a step back. Hardwoods like cedar were almost certainly scarce in the times of Old Kingdom Ancient Egypt, but getting hold of it wouldn't be that difficult, because known trade routes existed with Lebanon since early dynastic times. It is written that Sneferu, Khufu's predecessor, brought 40 ships full of cedar wood into Egypt, which really is a great quantity. Acacia trees were also in Egypt, and these would have been utilised, and there are also dense forests in Sudan and Ethiopia, and we know that Egypt did have a relationship with their neighbours in the south. So, in the Old Kingdom, I don't think that wood was as scarce as we may think. Furthermore, I think the idea that this rod found inside the Great Pyramid, which was likely attached to the hook, was some kind of precious object made of precious wood treated in the same way as gold is not right. I think it is just a functional object, nothing more and nothing less. It was probably left inside the opening of the shaft, so that if they were to open it, a tool would be there to help them clean it out. I don't know. But the object doesn't scream of importance. So, let's very unscientifically make it fit with the narrative of Khufu. The wood was radiocarbon dated to 3341 to 3094 BC. Let's take the latest date of around 3094 BC, which would not be scientific, but let's do it for argument's sake, simply because it is possible. Maybe the wood came from a 200 year old tree. That means the date of the Great Pyramid is actually around 2894 BC. Maybe the wood was repurposed, maybe from a 200 year old object like an old boat, which again is possible, as it is just a wooden rod that probably had some practical function. But that only gets us to 2694 BC. So, even with these assumptions, we are still 100 years off Khufu. I remember seeing comments on an internet forum by Lee Anderson, known as Thanos5150, a researcher who noted that the radiocarbon date range for just about every Old Kingdom structure is around 1 to 200 years older than the historical dates given in the ancient Egyptian narrative. In fact, I've just found a comment from him yesterday on unexplainedmysteries.com and he writes a long post of important information comparing radiocarbon dates to historical dates and he concludes that the Old Kingdom is likely to be 200 years older than the accepted historical dates. I'll link to his brilliant comment in the description below. 
he states a very compelling case that this is another way to interpret the results from the Great Pyramid Dixon Relic, as well as all of the Old Kingdom radiocarbon dates, that the narrative and the dating of the period is wrong. Yes, it could be Khufu if we use the latest date in the range provided by radiocarbon dating. It could be Khufu if the tree was 200 years old when felled and then repurposed from an old cedar object that was 300 years old. But these assumptions seem improbable. It could simply be that the timeline of the Old Kingdom is wrong. If Anderson is correct, maybe Khufu actually reigned from 2789 to 2766 BC. Cedar trees can apparently live for 1000 years, wood does get recycled, and I and anyone else can make the Dixon relic fit to a Khufu narrative. But I will stick my neck out and say that the reasons shown by Lee Anderson, and because of the radiocarbon dates obtained for all the Old Kingdom sites, I think that Egyptologists could have gotten the timeline out by at least 200 years. I still think that Khufu built the Great Pyramid for the many reasons outlined in my recent documentary, but I think that scholars and academics need to take a closer look at the timeline of ancient Egypt. Adjustments do need to be made, and in actual fact, this is something that scholars have argued about for decades. I think the Dixon Relic, together with all the other radiocarbon dates, does hammer the final nail in the coffin that the Great Pyramid was built thousands of years before the Old Kingdom. There really is no physical or datable evidence that it predates dynastic history. I'm not saying I know how they cut the granite or built the pyramids, I'm just saying the evidence says they did it. But I think the time has now come to adjust the timeline of ancient history. Stuff keeps on getting older, and I think that can be said for the entire Old Kingdom. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.